Hey guys, it's Saikuru Sam here, your weekly weather reporter. <laughs> I'm back with my sunglasses because my hair just can't be fixed. And today is actually rainy. I was gonna say this is kind of a depressing mood, but actually now that I look at it in the camera, it's kind of a cozy environment that we have set up here. Anyway, just get into the video, Sam. So in this video, we're gonna check out how to do realistic lighting in Unity. We're going to basically check out how I did a few lighting scenes like this one. We're also gonna take a look at adding lights and the volume framework and setting up HDRP for your project. So basically all of the components you're gonna need to add some realistic lighting to your Unity scenes. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to smash like and hit subscribe for more. So we're gonna get started with the basics first, but before that, I was gonna say first, but then it would have been repetitive. You get what I mean. But before that, <laughs> this video is sponsored by Revenapp. Revenapp is a digital agency focused on maximizing growth for your mobile games. Through the best and preferred channels like Google Ads, Facebook Ads, and Twitter Ads, along with many others, they ensure growth for your mobile projects. Revenapp is ready to work with studios of any size, big or small, and it doesn't matter if your marketing budget is of a large sum or a smaller sum. There's also a free trial period for new signups right now so you can test and assess the service and its benefits. One of the other things I really like about Revenapp is its simplicity. You can just simply enter your apps link from Google Play and they do the rest of the work for you. One of their core policies is also that they guarantee you to earn more in advertisement revenue than what you would initially pay for your advertisement campaign. I think it's a really cool service and a much needed one. I mean, indie developers tend to have low budgets and I know that because I used to be one for not so long ago too before the whole full-time job kicked in. And if this kind of a service existed back then when I used to be an indie dev, where I could apply to advertise my game without investing a fortune on it, it would have definitely helped. So go ahead to the link in the description of this video after watching this video, which is going to take you to Revenapp's website. And make sure you sign up for the trial period because once you actually have this kind of an opportunity, it's just not worth missing out on. All right, so with that being said, I'm not gonna spend any more time here because the duck is getting a little nervous. I think he's not ready for the cameras yet. Even though he has been part of my videos and actually some Unity videos as well for a long time now, uh, but let me know in the comment section if you guys have a name for him. All right, just get into the video. All right, so here we are in Unity. I am running Unity 2019.3 right now, um, but you can run 2020.1 if you want to. I know that's available in beta right now. And just so you guys know, I am running HDRP and I'm running a demo from Unity that's called Fontaine Blue. Uh, sorry if I butchered that name, by the way. French people, I'm sorry, don't be offended. I never promised you that I would have a good French, but I do know Swedish. <laughs> so I also have a new kind of a layout in Unity. Let me know if you guys like this. Um, I think I'm gonna stick to this for now for basically uh, demos where we take a look at scenes and levels. It's basically like a maximized scene window with the hierarchy at the top here, the inspector window, and then the project window. Let me know if this comes off as confusing to you or if you like this. So as you can see, the Fontaine Blue demo is already set up with the lighting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all of these components that we essentially wanna add throughout this video. So I created this sub game object or parent game object, which includes all of the environment objects objects. So I'm just going to unfold this and I'm basically going to disable the directional light, the sky and fog volume. <laughs> oh my God, this makes it really different. And I'm also going to disable the reflection probes. So yeah, those three are going to be disabled and this is basically as raw of a scene as you can get to. The only reason I'm keeping post process volume on is because it's basically predefined values which makes it look a little strange if I disable. So I think this is just a predefined scene, which I'm just trying to modify, which is not the best practice. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep this on for the moment being. By the way, if you guys wanna have a guide on how you can get set up with HDRP, you can follow the link in the description. But basically, we're gonna be checking out realistic lighting in general. So even if you're not using HDRP, I believe you should be able to still use most of the techniques you're gonna see here. However, it is suggested that you're using HDRP for ultimate realism. So with that being said, let's get into it. So first and foremost, we're gonna create our own sky and fog volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on game object, go to volume and pick the sky and fog volume. 
This is essentially a component that's needed for adding skies and skyboxes and basically just defining environment settings in HDRP. So let's go to the visual environment override and change it from physically based sky to HDRI sky. The reason I'm changing the type of sky is because we're actually, th this project comes with a skybox included. Um, but if you don't wanna use it, you can essentially just use a physically based sky as well. Now, importantly, if you do change this, or let me say this, if you don't change it, then you can see that you already have a override for physically based sky here. So you can just enable all of these options and play around with them as much as you want to. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove the physically based sky override because I'm changing it to HDRI sky anyway. So it's not gonna be making use of that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a new override, which is gonna be HDRI sky. That's not how you type sky. There we go. <laughs> Get it right, Sam. So of course the cube map I'm gonna pick here is part of the asset pack that this comes with. And if you guys wanna use the same package, by the way, it's gonna be linked in the description. The one that we're gonna pick is the HDRI sky forest. But again, if you don't wanna use the same package as I do and don't have access to this specific cube map, that's completely fine. You can just use any other cube map if you want to, or you can even use a physically based sky, just like I said before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the intensity mode of this HDRI sky to Lux. And you can see that it just becomes super shiny, which is not very ideal for our scene. So let's remove one of these zeros. And that actually looks pretty good. As you can see, you can define the value here as you want to. And keep in mind that this is actually not the lighting itself. This is literally just ambient lighting coming from the cube map. So we can actually just come back and change this value later if we want to. Let's keep it at 200 for now. And if you're using another demo, obviously you're gonna wanna just play around with the value and you don't have to use Lux. I'm only using this because it's just, I mean, I feel like it's better for lighting in HDRP. It just makes it easier for me to modify it. Next up, let's go ahead and fold up HDRI sky and then unfold the fog override. Now in here, let's enable all of our settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a custom base height value. So uh, let's just play around with this, keep increasing, oh, there it is. So you can see that the fog just kind of goes up in the scene view. So for now, I think I'm just gonna keep it at a value of around here, just so it looks a little bit like there is a mist around the water. I'm actually going to increase the maximum height a little bit as well, so it affects higher parts of the scene as well. And then I'm going to increase the anisotropy, which by their description, it basically controls the angular distribution of scattered light. And I feel like this angle right here is actually pretty good for this. All right, so let's go ahead and unfold fog as well. Cool, so I feel like we're done in the sky and fog volume for the moment being. So let's go ahead and enter the game object menu one more time. And this time add a light to our scene, which is gonna be the directional light. So of course the directional light is basically the sun in the scene. So you can see that it's not making a difference in the scene right now and that simply because the intensity is pretty low. And keep in mind, this is in Lux, so it's not the typical intensity value you would have in normal or the built-in render pipeline. This is in HDRP, so they're making use of Lux here. Or well, we're making use of Lux. And these values tend to be a lot higher than normal values. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna, what I normally do is, I can give you an advice, is I just put a one and then keep going zero, 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 zero until I find a value that kind of makes sense for me. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is like, for instance, here, I put in 10,000 lux as the value and it looks a little too much. But keep in mind, this is right now affecting the entire scene because we haven't enabled shadows on the light. So let's say for instance, I mean, normally like 1000 actually looks a lot better than 10,000 when you have shadows disabled. But once you go down to the shadows and enable them, it almost feels like you have no light at all. So just keep that in mind because now if we increase this back to 10,000, it looks natural. And this is still where it doesn't look fully natural because we have some weird flickering going on, which we're gonna solve. The direction of the light is not really good. Oh, and there is our volumetric light. But see, like this is now, starting to look like an actual realistic lighting setup. 
So what we're gonna do in our light more than just enabling the shadow is we're also gonna enable contact shadows. And let's also make sure we set the quality to be high. And the goal of using contact shadows is to capture small details that regular shadow mapping algorithms fail to capture. So it's basically the connection between an object and its shadow. One more thing I personally like doing is I click on more options, which is this little gear icon right to the override. And then I reduce the dimmer just a little bit. And the dimmer is basically the transparency for the shadow, as you can see. And if we have it as one, which it by default will be set to, it's kind of just going to turn it into pitch dark area. So like slopes and stuff like that are gonna be very much affected by the shadow, which is good for a certain type of scene, but this is not really that kind of a scene because there are so many trees here, there's a lot of light hitting, so it just kind of makes sense that the reflection from the water would make this part of the scene also just light up a little bit. Just a tiny tad bit. So what I do is I just reduce the dimmer just a little bit like this, and now it is visible. And actually we can even have it a little bit higher than that. What I pay attention to is basically just making sure that for instance, we have a bunch of pebbles and rocks here. I just don't want them to shine too much and really make it clear that these are indeed affected by shadows. I think that looks good. Now, as you can see here, we do have some kind of flickering going on with the shadows, which we're gonna solve by adding a few more overrides to our sky and fog volume. So the first override I'm gonna add here is the contact shadows override. Now, once we enable this, just pay attention to these rocks right here. Once we enable this, it's going to make them more visible. Although this is a little too much because we kind of want this rock to clearly cast a shadow over here, but we also don't want it to look like this where it just kind of fades into darkness. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press enable and then simply decrease the opacity to like 0.6. And we can even increase this a little bit. And you can see now that it's casting shadows quite clearly but it's not that much. You can still see parts of this rock and the pebbles. Let's also set the quality to high. What do you think I am running this on? A potato? I'm running HDRP, of course I'm gonna have high settings. <laughs> Everything on Ultra, RTX. One more override we're gonna add is gonna be micro shadows. And we're gonna enable this as well. If I disable this effect now, you can see this part of the scene really get hit by this kind of like a, I mean, just a, just a washed out lighting. Like if we enable this, you can see that it becomes more dark. It kind of reflects the fact that it is dirt or mud there. And it's not just being washed out by the light. However, I feel like this opacity is a little too much. So we can still decrease this to like 0.9 to really make sure that it is hit by light and that's clear to the viewer or the player, but it's just not being washed out by the light. And the next override we're gonna add is just shadows. Let's also enable all of the options here. Now the reason I'm adding so many shadow overrides is to really get, I mean just basically play around with all of the values to its fullest extent. We really just want to manually change as much as possible or not as much as possible but just many more things than usual so we can really customize the feel that our scene and the vibe that our scene actually casts. The first thing I'm gonna change here is the max distance for the shadows because 500 just feels too much for when we just have one part of the scene that we're looking at. But if you have a, and even if you have a scene where the player kind of walks around, which this is actually one of those scenes, you can still have it lower than the usual value. Basically 500 is better for if you have a open landscape where you want the player to be able to see like a really far distance. But this also means that the shadows from the trees casted onto the ground is a little more soft. Like if I, for instance, make this 300 instead and then undo this to just go back to usual and redo this to new value, you can really see the effect in these trees right here. Like right now with the value 500, it's not really possible to tell, oh, these are two trees casting shadows. But if I go back to 300, you can be like, oh, look, it's a tree that splits. And one thing to actually improve upon that and also solve most of the flickering, which is actually because the trees are moving, so it's windy and the, obviously the sun shafts or rather the sun is casting shadows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our directional light 
and simply change the resolution from custom of the shadows from custom to high. And this will make the shadows much more sharp, as you can see. One more thing that we can do is if we just return to our sky and fog volume, as you can see, the fog is still kind of just super visible in the backgrounds. Like there's a lot of light, but then it just kind of turns blue a little bit here. So what we can do is we can go into the sky and fog volume game object, and then in the component, we can unfold visual environment one more time and enable ambient mode and change this from static to dynamic. And we can also return to our HDRI sky and change the desired lux value for the intensity to something higher like 900 or even 500, which is still going to add the blueness, is that a word? The blue shade from the fog, but it's still going to keep it very clear as well. And on top of that, changing the ambient mode to dynamic from static also makes sure that the ambient light actually comes from the sky that is set in here. So if we actually change the sky, you can see that everything else changes as well. This actually looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm figuring out like a new video idea right now. Give me five minutes, okay? Now, of course, this water being so blue and so reflective kind of looks a little weird. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a reflection probe to fix that. So let's go to the game object menu and simply enter, no, not rendering, <laughs> light, there we go. So reflection probe, and then we'll move this to kind of the center of the scene here here. So first and foremost, let's make this a little larger. So let's do like 30 by 30 by 30 and then change the blend distance to two, which the blend distance basically sets the boundaries within this box. We'll also change the volume layer mask from default to everything because we want this to affect everything in the scene or well, everything within the scene within its boundaries, which is the box size that we set, right? And that should pretty much be all for this. I mean, we have it set as baked. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have to click on bake. And then once we play the scene, the water will no longer be just blue. And then once we exit the play mode, it's also going to finish completely being baked. So this is going to be the preview within the scene view. And if we disable the reflection probe, we can see the old version, which my eyes are bleeding. <laughs> but yeah, this definitely looks more realistic. All right, so that is pretty much it. Get out of my view. <laughs> I think this looks pretty good. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And you can see that these parts of the water are still a little too blue. And that's mainly because the box size is not reaching out all the way out there. You can see that it kind of ends here. But yes, I think this looks really good. I think it's realistic. Look at that water, look at that tree. The light shafts look really realistic and they hit the uh, fog in the scene really well as well, or really well too. I don't want to repeat my words. <laughs> I definitely really like this. Now I'm just trying to find a good thumbnail picture for this. <laughs> Let me move you a little bit because I want you in front of this trunk right here. I'm showing you guys the behind the scenes of a life of a YouTuber. <laughs> This is literally my job, by the way. Look at that composition skills. All right, so that is pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. I think it was a needed video for this channel because um, I've been focusing, I mean, I did some, you know, 2D videos now, so I just wanted to do something more for HDRP but specifically related to level design. Because as you know, I've been doing some more level design videos on my channel recently, and they have been, I mean, they've been received really well by you guys. So uh, clearly you, uh, you know, appreciate them. So I just wanna do more of them. Uh, but also cover the technical backgrounds. I'm also thinking of actually doing like a full two hour long tutorial on how I make one of those speed level designs, but not sped up. So it's not gonna be a time lapse, but just like a full out tutorial, which is a little difficult because it's kind of like a difficult topic to make a tutorial on because I'm literally usually just sitting like, let me place a tree there. <laughs> no, that tree was bad. Place it there. I'm moving my pointer. Rotate this duck. <laughs> That's basically me on those videos, <laughs> which I think should be fun to see. <laughs> but let me know in the comment section if that's something you wanna watch. Basically me screaming for two hours. <laughs> no, but really, let me know in the comments because I really wanna know. I'm curious to hear if you guys actually want a tutorial on level design. So yeah, guys, uh, make sure to join our Discord server by going to the link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I really appreciate likes. I like likes. <laughs> I'm really funny today. 
today, I know. And also subscribe to stay up to tune for new videos because we're gonna be posting a bunch more tutorials moving forward, including level design tutorials, like I mentioned before, if you guys want them. So leave comments, please. I would also like to give a big shout out to all of our patrons who support the channel, Cupola, Samuel Rivello, and the Messy Coder. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. So with that being said, I'm gonna leave you with the rainy weather in Copenhagen for a little bit and just hope that the auto exposure of my camera actually works so it's not just like a huge white screen. So on that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and had fun and found it helpful. If you have any suggestions or recommendations, let me know in the comment section. Smash like and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Se venino más para